Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A full-size pickup from Ford, the F-150 Supercrew 4x2 Lariat, and a hybrid subcompact hatchback from Hyundai, the Ioniq 1.6 GLS 6 DCT. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two sporty hatchbacks, the Honda Jazz RS and the Suzuki Swift GL. On Autopedia, we'll talk about reading and understanding a dyno chart. And together, with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall discuss the things to expect on this year's EV Summit as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Strata Athlete. Unleash the athlete. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Ford. The F-150. Ford's full-size pickup is back. In the official lineup of Ford Philippines, that is, after around a two-decade absence, is the local market ready for a full-size pickup? Let's check out what one variant of the two brought in by Ford, the F-150 Laria. The Ford F-150 Supercrew 4x2 Lariat is a large and imposing presence, even just parked on local streets. 5.89 meters long, 2.029 meters wide, while not including the side mirrors, and 1.920 meters tall. Riding on a 275x55R20 all-season tire, wrapped around 20-inch, six-spoke, dark alloy painted aluminum wheels. The Lariat clears the ground by 216 millimeters. The wheelbase measures 3.683 meters long. Everything about the F-150 is imposing. 
large quad beam LED headlamps with daytime running lights, flanking a large body colored grille with black mesh with two body colored thick horizontal bars with the blue oval forward badge in the center. Special Lariat exterior styling include body color side mirrors, side mirror caps, door and tailgate handles, magnetic angular step bars, and sports box handles. The exterior mirrors are imposing not only by their size, but by their functions. Power adjustable with memory, power folding, with side turn indicators. Imposing too are the array of features that pickup owners would appreciate. LED fog lamps, LED tail lights, high mount tail lamp with cargo lamp, pickup box rail and tailgate moldings, pickup box tie down hooks, drop in bed liner, and smart trailer tow connector. The F-150 Lariat comes with an impressive powertrain, a 3.0-liter EcoBoost V6 with auto start-stop technology that generates 380 horsepower at 5,000 revolutions per minute and 637 newton meters of torque. Power is sent to the rear wheels via 10-speed automatic transmission with select shift. Ford has chosen to bring in the Super Crew variants for the F-150 with four full-size doors and lots of room inside the cabin for five or even six. The 4x2 Super Crew comes in Lariat trim, the 4x4 in Platinum trim. In Lariat trim, the Super Crew 4x2 already comes with leather upholstery. The front seats can be heated or cooled and can be adjusted 10 ways electronically. The driver can set his most comfortable driving position to memory. The steering wheel also gets the leather treatment and heater function. Plus, it electronically tilts and telescopes and set to memory. Other cool interior features includes ice blue ambient lighting, dual zone automatic air conditioning, intelligent access with push button start, illuminated entry system, LED front dome and map lights, as well as the usual power windows, doors and tailgates, auto dimming rear view mirrors, sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. Today's motorists need to stay connected to the outside world, meaning the net for communication and entertainment. The Ford F-150 takes solutions to these needs to the next level. A large, easily readable instrument cluster features an 8-inch productivity screen between tack and speedometer. The infotainment system uses an 8-inch LCD capacitive touchscreen with SYNC 3 and compatible with App Link, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It comes with two smart charging USB ports and a 12-volt power point. It also comes with a navigation system with pinch-to-zoom function. Best of all, it plays through 10 speakers and subwoofer by Bang and Olufsen. Large and imposing on the road, the F-150 is nonetheless a breeze to drive, depending on mood need or road condition, driver can choose electric power assisted steering modes from normal, comfort to sport. Ride and handling is helped along by a suspension system featuring independent long spindle, double wishbone with coil over shocks in front and gas pressurized twin tube front and staggered outdoor mounted rear shock absorbers. The F-150 4x2 Lariat comes with a host of Ford's latest driver assist technology, including, among others, 360-degree camera with split-view display, active park assist, curve control, hill start assist, trailer sway control, rain-sensing wipers. It also comes with a Ford Copilot 360 Tech, which comprise pre-collision assist with autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, blind spot information system, lane keeping system, and auto high beam headlamps. Other safety and security systems include advanced track with roll stability control, front seat side airbags, 
and safety canopy system with side curtain airbags and rollover sensor, individual tire pressure monitoring system, security lock passive anti-theft system, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and perimeter alarm. Anybody in the market for a full-size 4x2 pickup should take a closer look at the Ford F-150 Lariat. Ford claims the F-Series of pickup trucks is America's best-selling truck for 43 straight years and the best-selling vehicle for 38 consecutive years. Will this reputation help it sell the F-150 locally? The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Autofocus, and we now have the latest auto industry news. The Toyota Hilux already claims the title best-selling pickup in the Philippines. So naming its latest iteration, the Conquest, could hardly be called presumptuous. After all, it already has conquered a good 30% of the mid-size pickup segment. Still, the question remains. Can the Conquest retain its hold on the pickup segment and conquer more pickup buyers? Toyota Motor Philippine President Atsuhiro Okamoto certainly is confident, saying this 2020, the new Toyota Hilux and Toyota Hilux Conquest arrive with an impressive new look that is more rugged and exciting than ever. The new Hilux is designed to meet the tough demands of Filipino drivers and the country's varying roads. I am confident that the Hilux would once again prove why it is the Philippines' pickup of choice. Tough on every road, every inch, a Hilux. The Hilux Conquest is offered in both 4x4 and 4x2 variants. The 4x4 powered by a 2.8 liter 1GD FTV 201 horsepower turbo diesel engine and made it to either a manual or diesel transmission. The 4x2 is powered by a 2.4-liter 2GD FTV 148 horsepower turbo diesel engine, also with either manual or automatic transmission. The Conquest contains much of the accoutrements now expected in top-of-line vehicles, as well as a practical and sporty pickup paraphernalia, smart entry and push-start system, power adjust with auto-fold side mirrors, speed-sensing door locks. 4.2-inch TFT multi-information display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, cruise control, bi-beam LED headlamps, and LED rear combination lamps with line guide, sports bar with LED lamps, over fender garnish, and Conquest decals on both sides of the cargo bed, tailgate assist, and bed liner. Aside from Conquest, G and E variants Toyota continues to offer the Hilux J in 4x4 and 4x2 cabin chassis 
and the FX. Toyota also introduces the Hilux Cargo, a rear seatless, windowless, and more affordable variant powered by the same 2GD engine. With all these Hilux variants for all budgets, needs, and wants, Toyota believes it will continue to be the best seller in the segment. Is the Outlander PHEV, Mitsubishi's popular plug-in hybrid SUV, just an aspirational vehicle in the lineup of Mitsubishi Motors Philippines Corporation? Something to attract prospective car buyers to the showroom, where they can then find more affordable and suitable vehicles for their needs? Or is its local introduction part of an initiative to promote the use of electrified vehicles by showing its broader benefits? Maybe its first delivery may provide an indication to Mitsubishi's plans. MMPC First Outlander PHEV customer is the Manila branch of Mitsubishi Corporation, or MC. The Outlander PHEV was received by local MC branch general manager Keiichi Matsunaga. MC, a global enterprise that develops and operates business with offices and subsidiaries in 90 countries and regions worldwide, has a 20% shareholding in Mitsubishi Motors Corporation of Japan. With the initial transaction of Outlander PHEV to Mitsubishi Corporation, MMPC is excited to jumpstart a collaboration between the two companies that is geared to promote environment-friendly and self-sustaining technology, said Mutsuhiro Oshikiri, MMPC President and CEO. As announced in January, we plan to integrate vehicle-to-home showcase facilities to some of our pilot dealers. We hope that in the future, we can also collaborate with MC to accelerate introduction of renewable and self-sustaining power supply system to MMPC, Oshikiri said. Vehicle to Home is power supply system which allows EV, PHEV batteries to restore and supply electricity generated from renewable energy sources to the home. Kia Philippines is offering generous discounts to those willing to wait for the arrival of the Stonic, a stylish subcombat crossover it plans to bring in later this year. Competitive pricing with discounts is just one of six reasons Kia cites for people to wait for the Stonic, which will arrive in three variants. The 735,000 Stonic 1.4 LX manual transmission the 835,000 peso 1.4 LX automatic and the 925,000 peso 1.4 EX automatic. Kia says those who reserve a Stonic on or before October 15 get a 60,000 peso discount for the 1.4 LX manual transmission and 50,000 for the 1.4 LX automatic and the 1.4 EX automatic. The other reasons include the Stonic design that has won awards and citations from international design groups, including IF Design and the Red Dot Design Awards. The Stonic is said to be built to be enjoyed, coming as it does with an entertainment package with an 8-inch touchscreen unit compatible to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Safety features are also Stonic attractions featuring among others, reverse parking sensors, hill start assist, and electronic stability control. It also comes with an efficient powertrain, a 1.4-liter, four-cylinder gasoline engine with dual continuous variable valve timing and paired to either a five-speed manual transmission or a six-speed automatic transmission. Kia also touts the five-year or 160,000-kilometer warranty, as well as 24-7 roadside assistance free for five years. <music> Mazda Philippines is now offering a five-year free periodic maintenance program for all Mazda vehicles sold from April 2020 onwards. The five-year program will cover all expenses for the periodic maintenance of Mazda vehicles covered by the new program at either 6 months or 10,000 km intervals for up to 5 years or 100,000 km. 
The free service plan will follow the comprehensive maintenance and parts replacement scheduled recommended by Mazda Japan. Mazda says close to 27,000 Mazda owners enjoy the savings, peace of mind, and financial security from the three-year free service plan which it first introduced in 2013. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. The only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. Hatchbacks are no longer as hot as they were before. Subcompact SUVs or crossovers are now the hot sellers. Still, sporty hatchbacks continue to have cult-like following and some are priced attractively. Head-to-head -head compares the specs of two sporty hatchbacks, the Honda Jazz RS and the Suzuki Swift GL. Ask hatchback owners why they bought theirs, and most would praise their sporty and fun-to-drive character. Others would likely say they prefer small, nimble, and practical vehicles for daily drives in congested urban streets. But fun to drive and practical may no longer be enough these days. Hatchbacks now have to compete with crossovers as well as cars in their class in the many aspects of the connected age, as well as safety, performance, and that all-important factor, value for money. What bang? is there for the buck. Head to head pits two hatchbacks with sporty reps, the Honda Jazz 1.5 RS Navi CVT and the Suzuki Swift 1.2 GL CVT and check out all that they offer for their sticker prices. The stock Honda Jazz is a sporty hatchback, but then Honda gave it the RS treatment with RS design for the front grille the front bumper with lower grille, the rear bumper, and the tailgate spoiler, and called it the Honda Jazz 1.5 RS Navi CVT. With the RS treatment, this top-of-line Jazz is 4,035 millimeters long, 1,694 millimeters wide, and 1,524 millimeters high. 
with a wheelbase of 2,530 millimeters. The Jazz RS also got the LED treatment for the headlights with guide type daytime running lights and the high mount stop lamp. Other exterior features include fog lamps, signal lights on the black power folding side door mirrors, chrome trunk garnish, a rear microtype antenna, side sill garnish, and body color door handles. The RS Navi also gets 16 inch gloss black aluminum alloy wheels wrapped by 185 by 55 R16 tires. The Suzuki Swift 1.2 GL CVT cuts a sleek aerodynamic space on the street at 3,840 millimeters long, 1,735 millimeters wide, and 1,495 tall, and with a 2,450 millimeter long wheelbase. Black grille with thin horizontal slats, halogen multi reflector headlamps, LED daylight running lights sitting above halogen fog lamps, LED rear combination lamps, LED high mount stock, 16-inch alloy wheels all combined to make for a racy look. A peek underneath the hood of the Jazz is a 1,497cc single overhead cam 16-valve four-cylinder engine with chain drive and programmed fuel injection and Honda's iVTEC technology. Max output of this Euro 4 is placed 120 PS at 6,600 revolutions per minute and 145 newton meters of torque at 4,800 RPM. The engine drives the front wheels via Honda's Earth Dreams technology, continuously variable transmission. A brake system using front ventilated discs and rear drums provides stopping power. Underneath the slow sloping hood of the Swift is the K12M engine, four cylinders, 16 valve and multi-point fuel injection. The engine generates 82 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 113 Nm of torque. Power and torque is transmitted to the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission. Stopping power comes from a brake system using front ventilated discs and lead trailing drums in the rear. The Jazz RS comes with smart keyless entry system with push button start. The Jazz can accommodate five comfortably in well cushioned orange stitch fabric seats. The front seat slides and recline with the driver getting an added benefit of adjustments for height. The rear seat can be folded and configured to accommodate odd-sized cargo of various lengths and widths. The three-spoke leather-wrapped and orange-stitched steering wheel tilts and telescopes. It comes with controls for audio, Bluetooth hands-free phone on steering wheel, as well as paddle shifters. Interior comfort and convenience features include power windows and power door locks, front and rear windshield defogger, seven bottle holders, sun visors with vanity mirror and lid with a ticket holder on the driver's side, map and dome light, a 12 volt accessory socket, automatic air conditioning with touch panel controls, and a center console with armrest. Infotainment comes from an audio system with a seven inch touchscreen with Bluetooth, USB and HDMI connectivity, navigation playing through six speakers, including two tweeters. The Swift GL cabin has room for five. The front seats slide and recline with height adjuster for driver. The rear seats split and fold 60-40. The D-shaped steering wheel lends a racy touch along with center console angled towards driver. Comfort and convenience features include power door locks, windows, steering, air conditioning with manual controls, pollen filter, two front cup holders, USB port and 12 volt accessory socket. Infotainment comes from a 7 inch multimedia touchscreen unit with four speakers and with offline navigation. The Jazz RS comes with a host of passive and active safety features that include five three point ELR seatbelts, dual airbags, side and curtain airbags, side door beams 
child safety lock and ISOFIX child seat anchors. It also comes with anti-lock brakes, electronic brake force distribution, vehicle stability assist, hill start assist, multi-view reverse camera, and alarm and immobilizer. For safety, the Swift GL comes with four three-point ELR seat belts, dual airbags, side door impact beams, ISOFIX child seat anchors, child seat tethers, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, alarm and immobilizer. A final comparison, the Honda Jazz 1.5 RS Navi CVT is listed at 1,088,000 pesos, while the Suzuki Swift 1.2 GL CVT is listed at 799,000 pesos. Those in the lookout for value for money hatchbacks should not only check specs versus list prices but also be on the lookout for promos. Automakers and distributors are coming out with really aggressive promos. The dealers may also be offering side deals too. Fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Strata Athlete. Unleash the athlete. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. More and more automakers and local distributors are introducing electrified vehicles, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and full electrics into the market. This is welcomed by the local electric vehicle industry, which is planning to hold its 8th annual summit online. After the COVID-19 pandemic, shut down the local economy for a number of months. The auto industry is looking to come back strong. 
It is doing this by aggressively launching new offerings, virtually, with Zoom press conferences and digital debuts streamed on Facebook and YouTube. One of the surprising shifts come in the form of more electrified vehicles, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and full electrics into the market. The local electric vehicle industry is looking at this shift with interest and has decided to push through with Summit that it has been holding yearly for decades. On September 24 to 26, the 8th Philippine Electric Vehicle Summit, or PEVS, will be held with the theme, Moving Forward to an Electrified Mobility in the New Normal. And like most everything these days, it will be held online. Mr. Edwin Araga, President of the Electric Vehicle Association of the Philippines, or EVA, explains the importance of pushing through with the summit. We really need to, uh, to launch this uh, summit, our annual summit. One is to let the people know that we are existing. This industry is a promising one and it is a sunrise industry. And second is in support of uh, the Senate Bill of Senator Gachalian to let the people know what is in store and uh, what are the benefits that it would get if ever ma fulfill the you know, approval of the Senate Bill and the Congress Bill as well and make it into a law. What is significant about the 8th PEVAS is that it has the support of major automotive companies, the Manila Electric Company, and the government agencies like the Department of Energy, Department of Trade and Industry, and the Department of Transportation. In announcing the holding of the 8th PEVS, the EVAP said the summit aims to bring together stakeholders across the EV value chain, as well as policymakers, regulators, academe, consultants, transport companies, utilities, and end users to exchange and share their experiences and research results on all aspects of electric vehicles and supporting infrastructure. It will also provide an online platform to present and discuss the most recent innovations, trends, and concerns as well as practical challenges encountered and solutions adopted in the area of electrified mobility. But one major objective is to promote legislation to encourage the installation of charging stations. The Electric Vehicles and Charging Stations Act is among the legislative priorities of both the Senate and House Committees on Energy. It's, it's really a struggle on the first because getting approval from the right partners who support us this uh, endeavor is really uh, very hard to convince them and let them know what can we provide in spite of this pandemic situation. Hoping that pull through and it's um, very timely that we don't want to be behind of the others. EVAP is optimistic for the local electric vehicle sector, even as it now seeing more and more major automakers joining and planning to participate in the local market for personal electrified mobility. Actually, it's uh, very exciting that uh, it's not only a few who are uh, launching their own uh, units. No? From the Japanese to Ch Chinese to the European needs, nandito na sa atin. So, we're happy that slowly but surely the market is really accepting the twist of fate of this uh, auto industry. Wherein that's where our direction is. Eh? We need to say there are a lot of people who are can afford to buy those some sort of uh, alternative uh, vehicles. Nissan and Mitsubishi are expected to showcase their electrified vehicles, notably the Nissan Leaf and the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Speakers and panelists at the 8th PEVS will be discussing the following topics. 2020 Long-Term Electric Vehicle Outlook by Frost and Sullivan. 
developing public charging infrastructure in response to the new normal. Challenges to EV charging in Southeast Asia. Recovery, reopening, and role of EVs under the new normal. Policy measures to see more EVs on the ground post-pandemic. Promotion of low-carbon urban transport in the Philippines. Policy dialogue with LTO revisiting EV guidelines. Speakers and representatives from Plug-in America and Electric Vehicles Associations of Southeast Asian countries have been invited to the 8th PEVS. We invited over Plug-in America. So Joe and Levine will uh, be the speaker of this and then uh, it would be uh, joined by uh, Nissan and from Miralco and BYD. And then um, we also invited over the ASEAN uh, network friends from AFEBA. EVA Malaysia, EVA Singapore, EVA Thailand. And they will be part of uh, as panelists for uh, discussing developing the public charging infrastructures. The EVA has an open invitation to everyone interested in promoting the use of electrified in the country. I'm inviting you over for, for our upcoming 8th Philippine EV Summit. This would be held on September 24 to 26. And it would be uh, on a virtual conference. And it would be a free registration. You just have to check our website and our Facebook or, or even on IG so that uh, you can register for free. Just click on the free register, uh, join the free registration and that's it. The 8th PEVS is expected to be a very significant milestone for EVAP and the entire EV sector and stakeholders in the country. Not only for the possibility of being one of the biggest online summits in the country, but also for how it can affect the growth of the local EV sector. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. If one wants to help maintain clear skies, options are available with hybrid and full electric vehicles in the market. One option is the Hyundai Ioniq 1.6 GLS 6 DCT. Let's check out Hyundai's entry to the hybrid market. Up next. Automakers worldwide are moving towards offering more hybrid and electric vehicles. This trend 
has been slow to reach and grow in the local market, hampered in part by hybrids and electrics being more expensive. Classified as a subcompact sedan hatchback at 4,470 millimeters long, 1,820 millimeters wide, and 1,460 millimeters tall, with a 2,700 millimeter wheelbase. The Hyundai Ionic 1.6 GLS 6 DCT features the wedge shape with high chopped rear design, common to most hybrid sedans. But the five-seater, five-door Ionic hides its hybrid genes well with a rather coupe-like aerodynamic silhouette or profile that has Hyundai claiming lowest in class coefficient of drag. Designed from the ground up to be a green vehicle powered by a hybrid or fuel electric powertrain, the Ionic still features Hyundai's distinctive trapezoidal grille flanked by sleek protector type headlights and cool daylight running lights. Side mirrors have repeater lights, a spoiler with high mount stop lamp, and LED rear lights add a sporty accent to the rear. So do the 17-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 225 x 45 R17 tires. The suspension system features McPherson struts in front and multi-link system in the rear. The Hyundai Ioniq 1.6 GLS 6 DCT has a hybrid powertrain that features a 1.6 liter inline 4 CVVT engine that generates 105 horsepower at 5,700 RPM and 15 kgm of torque at 4,000 RPM. And a permanent magnet synchronous motor with rated 43.5 horsepower and 170 newton meters of torque. The Ioniq Hybrid uses a lithium-ion polymer battery with 1.56 kilowatt per hour capacity and power output of 42 kilowatts. The hybrid engine sends power to the front wheels via six-speed dual-clutch transmission. Stopping power comes from a brake system using all-wheel disc brakes. Inside the Ionic is a clutter-free and comfortable cabin with intuitive instrumentation and controls that is a characteristic of Hyundai interiors. The Ionic brought to local shores has seats for five with great headroom for driver and front seat passenger. The driver benefits from power seat adjustment The driver also benefits from motor-driven power steering, tilt and telescopic steering column, audio remote, Bluetooth, and cruise controls on the steering wheel. The Hyundai Ionic 1.6 GLS 6 DCT also comes standard with power door locks, windows and side mirrors, full automatic air conditioning, front map lamps with sunglass case, and an infotainment system with 5-inch touchscreen with radio tuner and CD player. It also comes standard with a host of active and passive safety and security features. These include, among others, dual front airbags, side and curtain airbags, anti-lock brake system, engine immobilizer, and a rear parking assist system complemented by a rear camera with dynamic guidelines. Finally, the Hyundai Ioniq 1.6 GLS 6 DCT comes with a smart key with illuminated push-button start. Many governments in the world offer tax and other incentives to both sellers and buyers of hybrid and electrics to make them more affordable, all while setting tougher emission benchmarks. These, plus a growing awareness for the need to lower global emission of carbon oxide and other harmful pollutants, 
should help to shift to greener vehicles. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney from Speed Lab, and today I'm going to teach you how to look at a dyno chart, read, and understand it. Spend enough time on the internet and online and you'll probably come across one of these when talking about performance numbers. This is called the dyno chart and this is the most effective and straightforward way to prove that something makes power or not when it comes to engine modifications. A dyno chart basically tells you how much power and torque your car makes. That's it. It's very simple. It does not tune, it does not add power, it does not do anything except measure the power, horsepower of your car. It's basically a glorified treadmill for the car. So in every dyno chart, there's always two axes. One is the x-axis, which is always the RPM of the car being measured. So in this case, it's a Montero, so it's from 2,000 to 4,300. Then the y-axis here has horsepower and torque. For the Dynapack dyno chart, they split it into two. But later, we'll review another popular dyno chart that you've seen, which is from DynoJet. So these lines represent the number of runs in one dyno session. For the Dynapack one, each file can contain up to six runs, which is represented by these six colors. We'll start with the horsepower side. Which that's what everybody keeps asking, and that's what everybody sort of understands a little bit more. The first run is this red line, which is almost always here the baseline power, which means car comes into the shop, nothing has been done, we put it here, we take a power reading of what it is. Whether it's stock or slightly modified, it's called the baseline because we haven't done anything yet. Then subsequent runs, obviously the expected is you should get more power, which is why you're having it dyno tuned in the first place or having modifications done. And this is our second run. This is. Uh, a historical one which we already did a few weeks ago with the ECU reflash. So from here, you can see the peak power at stock is around 155, which is indicated here. This is our power after reflash, which is 181. Note that the RPM is pretty much the same, 3,400 RPM. So that's the correct way to compare power actually or anything. It has to be on the same RPM scale. Then this is what we did just now with a full exhaust installed. So we're up to 219 horsepower for this old 2009 3.2 Montero. Torque is the same way. You read the graph here. So with diesels, it always starts off high, then goes lower. But as you can see, we have a pretty big, almost 150 foot pound of torque increase here. From 312 to 446. That's pretty big, considering, just for reference, your average 7.8 only makes 100 foot-pounds of torque. Most people always quote when they get into these internet arguments is, Oh, my car makes 100 horsepower because that's what the brochure says. You are only partly right. It's 100 horsepower at a certain RPM. Like for this Montero, when people ask how much power did you make? Oh, stop, we make 155 at 3,500 RPM. This is important because if you look at the chart here at the bottom, you're only making 120 horses at 2,250 RPM. This part and this part almost nobody mentions. And here, towards the end of the RPM graph, you're actually only making 90 horsepower at red line of a diesel Montero. This is the number that everybody's most interested in, but this only tells part way of the story. Because here we have practically 155 to 218, that's about 65 horses. But at here, if we take these two points, it's actually closer to 60 horsepower. What you're most concerned about is the area in between the two charts that you're looking at. This one here. This is only one point, but you have to take the whole chart and the whole dyno as a whole. Same thing with torque. It starts off big, then gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you go down to red line. So next time when you want to argue with your friends, you should always ask, okay, horsepower at something RPM. It always has to have that because power by nature is defined as work over time. Torque is the work that you're doing, the amount of force that you're giving. Power is time, meaning how much force you apply over a period of time. And that period of time is from 2000 to 4,300 RPM. And the M in the RPM is minutes, so revolutions per minute. 
that's your measure of time. So power always has to have a length of time and the time component in between. It cannot just be, it's not a static thing like, oh, I make this much power now. Yes, and but what about a second later? What about five seconds later? Okay, that's for the Dyna chart from a Dyna pack. The Dyna pack is actually a brand of dynamometer. The same way that you have an Orion brand ruler, you have a Century brand ruler, and a Stanley brand ruler. Different dynos have different brands, but they all measure the same thing. It's horsepower. And then this is another type of dyno. This is from DynoJet, which is you also see a lot on the internet. And this is their dyno chart. As you can see, it's also the same. You have RPM here at the bottom. You have power here at the y-axis, but you have torque here at the other y-axis. What they do is they intersperse it with each other. Same thing also, you can have multiple runs represented by multiple colors. So this is two runs. Uh, first run is red, second run is blue. So this is the line for power, these two. Then this is the line for torque. Same thing also, there's a pointer here that you can put here and the values here will change. Also, maximum power at, it will show you here, 180 and 146 mm, horsepower at this RPM here, at 6,000 RPM. Then it will show you also max torque, which is somewhere here at 5,000 mm, RPM. So once again, you read it the same way, power at RPM, torque at RPM. And as you can see, when you're only at 2,500, you're only doing about 20 horse, then it gradually gets bigger, 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 until red line. Same thing with torque, this is a gasoline engine, so your maximum torque is made somewhere here in the middle. So some torque, some torque, some torque, big torque, big torque, then torque drops off. Now, are there other brands of dinos in the Philippines? Yes, there are. If your car comes with a printout from one of these, it is unquestioned what the numbers are. Okay, so that's how you read a dyno chart, whether it's from DynoJet or DynaPack. And if you go to the Speed Lab Facebook page, I do post a lot of these things. This one, sometimes this one, because we do have a DynoJet also. And with the correspond explanations, what these lines also mean. So yes, check it out. So you, you might learn a thing or two. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.